Hi everyone, I am Dr. Luna Yunus, Assistant Professor in the Department of Chemistry, Kamaraj College of Engineering and Technology, Virudhanagar. In this lecture, I would like to present uh, a topic on electrochemistry, which is a very important topic, electrochemical series or EMF series. So, in this let us see what is an EMF series and how metals are arranged in the EMF series and the key applications of EMF series. So, in chemical reactions electrons play an important role. Generally in redox reactions either electrons will be lost or electrons will be gained. So, for chemist this electrochemical series plays an important role and moreover from this series we can identify the reactivity of various metals and also this EMF series predicts whether a reaction will occur spontaneously or not and moreover this is having certain practical applications when designing batteries and also to understand the concept of corrosion EMF series plays a vital role. So, to start with let us see what is an EMF series. So, EMF series is nothing but a collection of metals or arrangement of metals based on their standard reduction potential value based on hydrogen scale. So, in this EMF series hydrogen is selected as a standard ok. So, let us see how this EMF series is being constructed. So, this is the table which represents the EMF series. Now, this table contains the collection of electrodes or metals followed by the reactions for the corresponding metals. So, all these reactions are reduction reactions followed by the standard electrode potential value E naught and finally, the nature of the metal. So, metals will generally be anodic or cathodic. So, that is being represented in the last column. So, to start with this hydrogen is selected as a standard in this EMF series. So, the electrode potential of hydrogen is found to be 0. So, E naught of hydrogen is 0. Now, when you look at this table, you can find out the met certain metals carry a negative E naught value. So, the metals which are present above hydrogen and some metals are present below hydrogen. So, the metals which are present above hydrogen carry a negative E naught value. For example, metals like lithium, magnesium, lead, zinc, iron, tin. So, all these metals have negative E naught value. Now, coming to the metals which lie, lie below hydrogen, for example, copper. So, the E naught value for copper is plus 0 0.34. Similarly, for silver, gold, platinum. So, all these metals will carry a positive E naught value. So, from this table, we can get certain informations. So, the metals which have negative E naught value. So, these metals are capable of getting reduced easily. So, these metals will act as anode, they undergo oxidation reaction. Similarly, the metals with positive E naught value. So, these metals are capable of accepting electrons. So, for example, if we consider copper, Cu 2 plus plus 2 electrons will give Cu, which carries a positive E naught value. So, from this we can decide the metals which can act as anode and which can act as cathode in an electrochemical cell. So, in general metals which are present above hydrogen will be anodic in nature. For example, tin, iron and so on. Similarly, metals which are present below hydrogen like copper, silver, gold all these will be cathodic in nature. So, this is very very important when constructing an electrochemical cell ok. Now, let us see the applications of EMF series. So, the EMF series has a wide range of applications. So, first one is to calculate the EMF of a cell. It is used to find the relative ease of oxidation and reduction to calculate the equilibrium constant K and displacement of one metal by another and displacement of hydrogen from an acid and spontaneity of a reaction. So, first let us see how to calculate the standard EMF of a cell. So, we all know the EMF of the cell is calculated using the formula E naught right minus E naught left. So, in an electrochemical cell when we subtract the electrode potential of the 
cathode from the anode we can find the EMF. So, standard EMF of the cell is given by E naught cell is equal to E naught right hand electrode minus E naught left hand electrode. For example, if we consider a copper zinc cell, a cell which has copper as well as zinc. Now, in this case zinc will act as the anode. So, as already we have seen in the EMF table, zinc carries a negative E naught value. So, E naught for zinc is minus 0 0.76 volt. Now, coming to copper, this copper has a positive E naught value. So, E naught for copper is equal to plus 0 0.34. So, it has a positive E naught value and it will act as a cathode. Now, EMF of this cell. So, EMF is equal to E naught right minus E naught left. So, E naught 0 point that is we have to write the E naught value for copper minus E naught of zinc. So, E naught of copper is 0 0.34 minus E naught of zinc is 0 0.76. So, this is equal to 0 0.34 plus 0 0.76 which is equal to 1.1 volt. So, EMF of this cell is equal to 1.1 volt. So, from this EMF series we can easily calculate the voltage which is produced in a cell. So, this is the first application. And the second application is relative ease of oxidation and reduction. So, oxidation is nothing but loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So, from the EMF series table we can decide whether a metal can be readily oxidized. So, the metals already we saw the metals which are present above hydrogen in the EMF series will undergo oxidation since it carries a negative E naught value. So, coming to the table. So, for example, metals like lithium, magnesium all these carry a negative E naught value. So, they are capable of undergoing oxidation easily. So, for example, if we consider Zn, zinc is capable of undergoing oxidation. Zn gives Zn 2 plus plus 2 electrons E naught is equal to minus 0 0.76 volt. Similarly, if we consider copper. So, copper which lies below hydrogen in the EMF series. So, copper is capable of undergoing reduction as I told already Cu 2 plus it accepts 2 electrons and it forms copper Cu. So, the E naught value for copper is equal to plus 0 0.80 volt sorry 0 0.34 volt. So, the metals which are present above hydrogen are capable of undergoing oxidation. So, all the metals like lithium, zinc, iron, lead which lie above hydrogen is being oxidized easily. Metals below gets reduced easily. So, this information can be easily obtained from the EMF series table. Okay, the third application is calculation of equilibrium constant K. So, the equilibrium constant K can be calculated using the free energy change. So, delta G naught is the standard free energy change. So, delta G naught is equal to minus R t ln k. Now, in the next step we all know this expression delta G naught is equal to minus R t ln k. Now, converting this ln to log that is natural log is being converted to log to the base 10. So, it has to be multiplied with 2.303. So, this equation becomes minus R t multiplied by 2.303 log k. Therefore, log k is equal to minus delta G naught divided by 2.303 R t or this delta G naught is nothing but N f E naught. So, we know the equation delta G naught is equal to minus N f E naught the standard free energy change. So, substituting for minus delta G naught this becomes N f E naught divided by 2.303. So, once we get the log k value we can easily find the k value for by finding the anti log of this expression that is N f E naught divided by 2.303 R t. So, this is the 
this is how the equilibrium constant k is being calculated from the series. Okay, so, we can get the E naught value from the series. Once it is being substituted, we can easily find the k value. So, n is nothing but the number of electrons involved in the reaction. F is Faraday's constant which is 96500 coulomb. R is universal gas constant 8.314 joule per kelvin per mole and this is carried out at a constant temperature of 273 kelvin. So, we can easily substitute and get the k value. Then coming to the third application, third one is displacement of one metal by another metal. So, already we have seen metals above hydrogen, some metals lie below hydrogen. The thing is the metals which lie above hydrogen and which carry a negative E naught value are capable of displacing the metals which are present below hydrogen which carry a positive E naught value. So, let us consider zinc and copper. Zinc is a metal which is above hydrogen, copper is a metal which is present below hydrogen. Now, we are considering copper sulphate solution. Now, when zinc reacts with copper sulphate, it becomes this zinc will displace copper from its solution. So, it becomes Zn SO4 plus Cu. The reason is E naught of Zn is negative minus 0 0.76 volt and E naught of copper is plus 0 0.34 volt or in other words more reactive metals are capable of displacing less reactive metals from its solution. Okay, so, this is the fourth application and coming to the next application. This is also similar to the previous one. This is displacement of hydrogen from an acid. So, the previous application was displacement of one metal from another metal from a solution. Now, in this case we have to consider an acid. For example, again we have to consider metals above hydrogen, metals below hydrogen. So, again I am considering zinc. Now, when zinc reacts with an acid, for example, sulfuric acid. So, Zn plus H2SO4 gives Zn SO4 plus hydrogen. The thing is the metals present hydro above hydrogen are capable of displacing hydrogen from an acid. So, hydrogen is being displaced from an acid. So, this is possible only with metals which carry a negative E naught value. For example, zinc, lead, iron, lithium all these metals will undergo this type of displacement. Okay, now, considering a metal which lies below hydrogen. Now, if we consider silver. So, E naught for silver is positive. So, it is plus 0 0.80 volt. As I told this displacement is possible only with metals which carry a negative E naught value. Now, since this silver carries a positive E naught value, this type of displacement that is hydrogen displacement is not possible in this case. So, this is the fifth application. And next one is spontaneity of a chemical reaction. So, as we all know spontaneous and non spontaneous. So, spontaneous reaction is one which occurs on its own without any external force. Okay. Now, based on the E naught value that is uh, sign that is it can either be positive or negative. So, based on this we can decide whether a reaction will be spontaneous or not. So, in this case suppose if E naught is positive the reaction will be spontaneous in nature, it will occur on its own. And in the second case, if E naught value is negative, the reaction will become non spontaneous. So, based on the sign, we can decide whether the reaction is spontaneous or not. So, to conclude or to summarize, let us see what we have discussed. That is, we have discussed what is an EMF series followed by the applications and the construction of EMF series. So, this EMF series plays an important role in various practical applications. For example, in the construction of batteries. So, when a battery is constructed, the anode and cathode will be selected based on the E naught values and also this is very, very important to engineers for controlling corrosion. So, corrosion control will be done based on the E naught value. So, metals will be chosen based on the E naught value. Thank you.